The next thing we're going to talk about is olefin metathesis. Unlike the first three reactions, the Hextilly and Suzuki reactions, this one's a little more complex in the way we can use it, but I think it's kind of fun. Anyway, um, how do you know you're going to do olefin metathesis? Because you see this over the arrow, ruthenium on a double bond. Now, ruthenium on a double bond can come in a bunch of different ways, but if you see RU double bond, you know you're doing this. This is your Grubbs catalyst. And if you want to see what it actually looks like, you can Google search Grubbs Catalyst and you're going to see a spider on your screen, basically. Anyway, point being, how does this reaction work? Well, there are two main ways you're going to see it. First of all, this is one example. You have a carbon chain with one double bond in it, a carbon-carbon double bond more specifically, and then over the arrow you see your Grubbs Catalyst and some other kind of carbon-carbon double bond in excess. They don't have to say excess, but this example did, so I'm going to say excess as well. Now, what you're going to do is, first of all, number your carbons because there's a here it's very easy to accidentally gain or lose carbons that you don't intend to gain or lose. So we have 10 carbons in this chain right here, and then also number the double bond carbons, not the ruthenium carbons, but whatever the double bond they give you over the arrow. So I have 11 and 12 as well. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take the double bond that they give you and the other double bond and kind of line them up on top of each other. So take this one and just draw the other double bond on top of it, like that. And so here's 11 and here's 12. Now what you want to do is draw a dotted line between 11, and, or draw a dotted line between one end of the double bond and the other end of the double bond and do the same on the other side. So we do that. Now what you're going to do is erase the original two double bonds. The double bond between 11 and 12 is now disappearing, and the double bond between 6 and 7 is also disappearing. Now, on that dotted line that you drew, make two new double bonds like this. Okay? So what this, these would be the two products of your olefin metathesis from the original starting material. What you end up doing is kind of snapping the double bonds in half and taking those little sticky pieces and sticking them to each other. So now 11 is connected to now 11 is connected to 6 and 12 is connected to 7. And so you get two separate pieces by this means. Now the other example you'll see in all of the metathesis is where you start with two double bonds in the actual starting reactant. So for example, let's say I have a double bond like this. Just put a nitrogen here for fun and a double bond like that. Okay? And then you see over the arrow RU double bond. Okay. Now, again, start by just numbering your carbons. One, two, three, four, well, I'll number the nitrogen for fun, six, seven, and eight. Okay? So now we're kind of doing the same thing. We're going to line those two double bonds up. So I'm just going to redraw this a little nicer so it's easier to visualize. So I have seven to eight like that. I'm going to redraw one and two so it's like this, two there, and renumber these. 1 and 8, and you're just going to be doing the exact same thing you did uh, for the other uh, scenario. So start by just drawing a dotted line between the ends of the double bonds like this. Erase the original double bonds. <clears throat> and now draw two new double bonds between where you dotted. So I have connected now 2 to 7 by a double bond, and I've connected 1 to 2 by another double bond, and these would be my two. Uh, products. So I have 2 and 7 now connected, and now I have 1 and 8 connected. So there are two, the two ways you're going to see olefin metathesis used is one, to break apart a chain, or break apart a ring or something. And the other way you can do it is to create a chain, or create a ring. And this is the example where you create that ring. Okay? And this ability to create rings is actually fairly helpful in synthesis problems. Because what if, in a synthesis problem, you were given this structure here? Let's give you just a, let's give you a seven-membered ring, like this. And you were told to synthesize that from four carbons or less. So start by numbering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have never seen in all of Orgo so far, at least I assume not, a way to make a seven-membered ring. We have a bunch of ways of making six-membered rings, but there's no direct way of synthesizing a seven-membered seven ring until now. Olefin metathesis is your answer. First of all, remember what olefin metathesis involves. Carbon-carbon double bonds. Well, we don't have any carbon-carbon double bonds, so your first step should be make a carbon-carbon double bond. 
And since our product is something without double bonds, we can use H2PDC to go backwards to a carbon-carbon double bond. I'm going to draw this ring a little smaller so I have more room. And I'm just going to put the double bond there. I can honestly put the double bond between any of these bonds because, well, um, it's the same thing going forward. If there's a double bond here, here, or here, H2PDC still, turn, still turns it into a single bond. And now I can do all of the metathesis. So let's start by numbering the carbons again. 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. Now remember how olefin metathesis worked in that last example. By closing the ring, we ended up chopping off two carbons, which means going backwards, we're going to have to add two carbons back. And quite frankly, what you can kind of do is what we were doing before, just drawing that double bond here. Because we know that we should be connecting three to this end and this and two to this end, and, well, we can do that on the side to double check. So what should be over the arrow? First of all, the Grubbs catalyst, so RU double bond. And then we'll just use a carbon-carbon double bond like that, and we'll say excess. Okay, so now, actually, no, I don't want to have that there. We'll see why in a second. Okay, so going backwards, remember how it works. The product we should have gotten was the ring that I have already drawn and the double bond here. These were the two things that were at the end of this arrow, so this and then this. So you can go backwards, to, you can figure out what it looked like by going backwards by just doing the process we did before. Connect, dot the lines, connecting to the, the two double bonds, erase the original double bonds, and now make two new double bonds where those dotted lines are. So this right here should be what is at the start of the arrow. And notice I had to add two carbons onto this structure to do this. And yes, that's counterproductive. You want to be cutting carbons off, not adding them. But now I'm in a much better position because it's not a ring anymore. And I can start working with those double bonds and cutting them apart. And the reason why I said I don't want to have double bond in excess is because the two double bonds I was using was, were already in the structure here. So I don't need this extra double bond. That would just make things react a bit weirder. Okay, so now where do I go from there? Well, what kind of reaction makes carbon-carbon double bonds? Elimination reaction. So I want an elimination reaction to make this double bond, and I can do that by using some strong base. Let's say Turkey Toxide, because we haven't seen him in a while, but he's still just a good base. Um, and let's number my carbon so I can keep track. We have one, two, seven, six, five, four, three, and I guess the new carbons we added, we can just number uh, uh, eight and nine. Okay, now terpitoxide, what it does is it pulls off a proton next to the carbon with a good leaving group on it to form that carbon-carbon double bond. So what I'm turning this back into is a carbon-carbon single bond with a bromine on it. And I'm only gonna do it for one double bond because I only wanna work with one bromine. Terpitoxide won't affect the other double bond, so let me draw this out and then I can point out what I'm talking about. So if I had this molecule and I reacted it with terbutoxide, all, would, all that would happen is this terbutoxide would grab this proton, like so, the electrons swing down and kick the bromine out, and that would give me the carbon-carbon double bond there. It has no reason to react with this double bond, so it's fine to just leave it there. I recommend not reacting with both because then you have to worry about two bromines at the same time. It's better to have one variable that you can work with through the entire problem than multiple ones where technicalities can come into play. So now I have a bromine on the carbon chain, what do I do with that? Well, we will, whenever we're trying to cut carbons apart, our goal is to get back to an OH, and we have a reaction that turns OHs into bromine, PBr3, or you could use HBr. I will say here though, PBr3 is the better option because it is a primary carbon, and HBr follows a carbocation mechanism, meaning this would be a primary carbocation, which we, if you remember, is very unstable. Also, HBr has the potential to react with this double bond here, and we don't want that. So now I have my OH on the carbon chain, coming out of space. So I have my OH here. Let me number this to make sure I don't miss count. So we have 8, 2, 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 9. 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 8. And now we're finally able to start cutting these carbons apart. 
So let's make some space. <clears throat> okay. So remember, you have two ways of cutting carbons when there are OHs involved. The alkyl lithium method and the epoxide method. I'm going to start with the epoxide method because that's the one that is less appreciated. But it's very useful in synthesis because it allows you to cut two carbons at once. What you do is you start from the carbon of the OH and we'll label that A. Now you're going to label bonds away from that until you count to C. So A, B, C. A, B, C. And this is the only way I can number because this is the only carbon chain there attached to that OH. And now what you're going to do is you're going to, if you're using the epoxide method, cut the bond between B and C. A and B, those carbons will be your epoxide carbons. So one, two, and we said that was, based on our original numbering, that is eight and two, and based on our lettering, A and B. That's step one, and then also on, on the arrow, you need step two H plus, and now you just, on carbon one, the carbon that you labeled C in this example, well, let me draw in the carbon skeleton first. So the carbon that we labeled C now gets a lithium, okay? And then let's just add in the number so we keep track. So this is one, two, or not two, seven, six, five, four, three, nine. Okay. Now we have a lithium on a carbon chain, and this is four carbons or less, so we're done with that epoxide. Let's do this again. Well, we can't do that yet. We need to turn lithium into an OH. So how do we do that? The only reaction that ends with lithium on a carbon chain is lithium over the arrow, and that turns lithium back into a bromine. So now I have a bromine on carbon one. Okay. And at this point, we're right back where we started. We have a carbon with a bromine on it, so we need to turn it into an OH and then cut again. So let's do that. First of all, let's number one, seven, six, five, four, three, nine. <clears throat> So turn bromine into an OH going backwards with PBr3. Again, HBr is a possibility, but I don't think it's recommended here because you don't want it to react with the double bond, and it's hard to make a carbocation that is primary. And so now I have an OH on that position with PBr3, and I can cut again using the epoxide or the alkyl lithium. I will do the epoxide first, and then I'll give you an example of the alkyl lithium cutting just so you uh, have it fresh in your mind. But let's do the epoxides first. So once again, you're going to label the carbon with the OH A. So let me use green this time. You're going to label the carbon with the OH A, the next carbon over B, and then the third carbon over C. And epoxides allow you to cut between the bond of B and C. A and B will be the carbons of the epoxide. So you have one, two, oxygen, that's step one. Step two is H plus. And then on carbon C, on your reactant side, you should have a lithium. Okay, so there. Okay, now let's just make sure they're correct. Just make sure they're correct. One, seven, six, five, four, three, nine. And this was made up of carbons uh, one and seven. And now I have carbon six, which was carbon C based on my lettering scheme. And then I have five, four, three, and nine. And now I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So I still have to cut a little more, unfortunately. Um, so I'll do the alkyl lithium now. Because alkyl lithiums only cut one carbon off. That's why the epoxide is probably the better method if you're going for speed and saving time. But it doesn't hurt to practice with the alkyl lithium, so let's do that. Either way, we can't do that until we have an OH, so we're doing this again. Turn lithium back into bromine, turn bromine back into OH. So. First off, lithium over the arrow converts a lithium into a bromine. Now over the arrow, we need to turn a bromine back into an OH, so you use PBr3. And now you have an OH where you can cut. All right, so we have an OH now, and we just need to cut off one, two, three, four, five. We need to cut off one carbon. So Let's do the alkyl lithium method now. Now for the alkyl lithium, what you're going to do is you're still going to be lettering, uh, no, uh, labeling the carbons, 
but you're only going to label the carbon directly attached to the OH as carbon A, and the carbon directly attached to the, um, the next carbon over, rather, as carbon B. Because alkyl lithiums, unlike epoxides, which cut two, these can only cut one bond apart, so we'll be cutting the bond between A and B. In general, epoxides are faster, but sometimes you only need to cut one bond away, so it really depends on the situation. Now, what you're going to do is, over the arrow, you have step one and step two, just like the epoxide. In step one, the carbon that is labeled A is now going to be a, C, uh, a carbon attached to a double bond O. And then whatever else is attached to A is there as well, since A only has two other car uh, two, since A only has two hydrogens, now it's two hydrogens on that double bond O. And so that is carbon, the carbon that we labeled A. And then step two is just H plus or water or H2O positive. You just need a proton source. Now what's going to be on the other side of the arrow? Carbon, you uh, have the carbon chain exactly the same, and then carbon B is going to have a lithium on it. Just like with the epoxide, the lithium makes a carbon negative, so it can attack whatever the oxygen is attached to, whatever carbon the oxygen is attached to. So we have 9, 3, 4, 5, and here's carbon 6. Okay, so that's the gist of all of the metathesis used in synthesis. It's a, it's a clever way of making really large rings from just a regular old carbon chain with double bonds in it. Okay, and that's it for all of them.